This is Graham from .easy, coming to you with another video. This one is also part of our WordPress series. We're going to be bringing you one showing you how to clone an actual WordPress site. We're going to be using this through a plugin called Duplicator. It actually simplifies a lot of the process, so you can skip out a lot of the nitty-gritty file moving. It helps compress everything into a single solitary file for you, and then creates an installer file that you can run on the other server. So we're going to be showing you how to install the plugin, set it up, create the installer packages, and move them across the other site, and then eventually upload it and run it and install it to the other server as well. This way you can easily take an existing WordPress site you have with all the themes, the plugins, all the content, get it set up on another subdomain, another domain, even in another subdirectory, so that you can get it running. Now you may ask yourself why you'd want to do this. There are a couple instances where it is very handy. If you have a site about a couple different topics and you decide that it grows large enough that two topics should actually split off and have their own sites or their own subdomains, for instance, say you run a news radio and it happens to cover sports as well and you decide you want to separate out sports and give it its own section, that's an exact reason why you can do it. You clone the original site, move it across, you take out all the news sections after you've moved everything, and there you go. You've got everything already pre-set up, all the sports content is still there and now you've got them individualized against each other. So we're going to be starting this off as usual by going into WordPress and going into the dashboard. From the dashboard, we want to go into plugins and we're going to add new. From here, we're going to type in duplicator as this is the name of the actual plugin itself. We can see it's the WordPress duplicator. It's got five stars. We're going to click install now, click on OK. This is going to download it for us and install it. Once it's downloaded and installed, as usual, we want to make sure to click Activate Plugin so it actually takes effect. Once we've done that, we're going to look in the list here and we can see the duplicator is already set up. We're going to click on where it says Manage. And once we go into Manage here, you're going to see it says immediately that there's no packages found. Now, this is because we've just installed it. There's nothing supposed to be here. So we need to start off by actually creating a package. So we're going to click on where it says Create New. For the package name, it's going to default it to the date as you can see here, and then it just always calls it my blog. You can free to call it anything you want. There's no restriction. We're just going to leave it as a default name, just because naming we don't need to worry about. For the notes here, it's a good idea to include the notes because it does update and create the installer files with them, so you can tell which installers for what in case you accidentally grab the wrong files. If you're just doing it as a one-time off, it's not really that important. If you're doing it multiple package backups, then yes, it is very important to do. So we're going to call this duplication of wedding site. And then we're going to go ahead to Archive. Now, for the Archive, we're actually not going to touch anything. We're more just showing it to you. You can set up different formats for it to zip the content to. You can even set up different filters and different database filters for the way it's going to compress the content, just in case you have any special setup you need to address. We're actually going to leave this blank here, just because it's easier to have it handle itself and do a normal backup. Last thing here is with the Installer section. This is you can pre-build part of the installer. You can actually create the MySQL settings you need for the database. You can set up special SSL things. You can even put the new site URL. And this means that when you do the installer later on in the process, which we're going to be showing you later, it's already got the information pre-filled in. So we're going to leave this all blank here as well, just to keep it defaulted. And then we're going to click on where it says Next at the bottom. And this goes through and scans the site. This is just making sure that everything's where it should be, that there's not going to run into any problems. You'll see it give a list of different things like good, good, and warnings. Whenever there's a warning, you need to make sure to take a look at it. Now, for these two, we've got two of them showing up. For We've got large files, which is OK, because we're running a wedding site. We're expecting higher quality pictures, so they're going to be larger. Where it says PHP settings, this is actually just because of some of the server security settings. In this case, both of these are OK. They're not going to give a problem. Most of the warnings here aren't necessarily that it's going to fail. They're more warnings that it may time out or it may run into some longer than usual backup times or settings. Now, it does also tell you the actual size for it as well. So naturally, if your site is larger, do expect a much bigger time frame for how it's going to back it up. It also does depend a bit on your internet connection when you're going to download it a little later. So just do keep in mind a bigger site may not be the best idea to do it this way. You may want to go into FTP because that way the program can just auto go through the queue and download all the files on its own over a longer time without any kind of disconnects. So that may be a better way to go. But otherwise, this one definitely does work. And we can see we've got an OK size site here. I'm going to go to where it says Build. It's going to create the files for us. It doesn't take too long just because it's a small site. Again, if you have a large site, it will take more time to go through and do so. We're just going to wait for this here to finish. 
And we can see it's got the check mark saying it's done. And there's two different files. So we're going to click on installer first of all. We're going to download the installer.php. We then want to click on where it says archive and download our archive zipped up folder. As you can see here, it's going to take roughly about 20 seconds for it to download. So we're just going to quickly give it a second to do that. And in the meantime, we're going to show you the wedding site. This is the actual site we're going to be moving across. It's actually one that we set up in a previous video. So if you want to check out the video for how to set it up, you can easily do so. It is on our channel. And we can see here it's got the little flash scenery going across with the photo gallery. We've got the story section. We've got different plugins at the bottom. So when we move this across, it's going to show all of this exactly the same as it was. We can see it just finished downloading. So we're going to go on to the next step. The next step we can do once we've actually downloaded the content requires you to either have an FTP program. If you're familiar with one, you can use either FileZilla for Windows. It is free to download and it is easy to use. If you're on a Mac, you may want to go with CyberDuck. It's its counterpart. It is free and easy to use for CyberDuck uh, for a Mac operating system, so it's very easy to use. If not, if you don't have any FTP programs or if you're not comfortable with using them, you can also go into the control panel, the C panel, and you can actually go into the file manager here. This is another way you can do it. Easily upload it through there. You just go into the file manager, click upload. I'll put it on the server for you. In this case here, we're actually going to be using FileZilla to do it. So in FileZilla, we can see we're already connected up to our server here, and we're inside the public underscore HTML folder. So do make sure you're inside the public underscore HTML folder if you want it to show up at the new domain, just actually at the domain level. If you're putting this in a subdomain or if you're putting this in another directory, make sure you do go to the specific area where you want to upload it first. So we're just going to go back to the downloads folder here, and we can see we've got the two files set up. So we want to move these both across here. I'm just going to drag them across. And there we go, installer downloaded. And now it's uploading the other one. And there we go, they're both now on the server. So once you can see they're both successfully across, and you can see they've been completed, that's all we need to do for FileZilla, very short, very simple. And we need to go back to the browser. The next step we need to do is we need to set up an actual database on the server. And this we're going to be doing through the control panel. So we're in our sample domain.net, where we normally use for the videos we're shooting. And we're going to be using this to set it up. So we need to go into the control panel, which you can find in Member Zone if you're not familiar with this. You can go under Quick Reference and find it located there, Site Admin Panel. We need to go down to Databases, and where it says MySQL Database. So in here, we can see right now in the database table, it's blank. There's nothing set up whatsoever. So we need to first of all set up an actual database for this. So we're just going to call it WP to represent that it's WordPress. You're free to call it whatever you want, no problems. You'll see it said it added it successfully. We need to go back. So you can see we now have an empty database in the table. Next thing we need to do is we need to create a user for it. So we're going to go here. We're going to call this WP user. And then we need to set up a password for this. And the stronger the password as usual, the better it is. We go ahead and create user. After we set that up, it's going to give you an OK for that. And then the last thing we need to do is it still shows there's no user here. So do make sure that you remember to actually go down to the last section here, which is as user to database, and connect the two. You want to make sure you set up all privileges. Otherwise, you may find some things don't work. And then with that, we know it's all set up. You can tell it's all set up because it says the database is there. It says the size is 0. It says the username is there. And that's everything you need to know that it's all set up and good to go. So with that, we're now done with the cPanel side of things as well. Very short, simple step, easy to do. Next thing we need to do is we need to actually call up the installer file we created. So we're going to go to the sample domain.net here, and then we're going to go to installer.php. And with this here, we can see now it pulls up the installer file. You want to make sure it says pass here. That means it's OK and going through. If it ever says fail, you want to just quickly check to see why. If you have other zip files in the directory you put it in, it may fail just because it's not sure which one to use. So that's a, uh, one of the more common reasons why it fails. If there's any other reason, you can easily contact either the duplicator support, or you can contact us. We'll be more than happy to try and work through it with you. For this one here, once it says pass, next thing we need to do is go into the MySQL database. Now, if you've still got the MySQL database open, you can actually just simply copy and cut these straight off. That's what we're going to do. We've got the database name. is where it says database name here. We're going to go to where it says users. Just copy the user across. And then once we've got the database here, we're going to go ahead and just put in the password. Once you've got that all in here, you want to click Test Connection. 
you can see it's successful, so we know everything's set up perfectly fine there. And then the last thing you need to do is you need to make sure to go to I've read the warnings and notices before it allows you to actually run the deployment. Now there is one other option that we're not going to touch upon here, but just to show you. If you go under advanced options, you can start setting up separate things like manually extracting the package. You can go through and do it yourself. You can also set up different security settings as well. In this case, we're going to leave those all blank. We're not going to worry about it. And we're just going to run the deployment. So we want to click on OK. It's going to now go through and set up everything for us. So you can see, very quick, very easy, it's already set it up and installed it. So here it shows, first of all, the older settings. This is where it used to be installed to and what the older URL was. So we can see our newer URL is already picked up. It's put it in the same place where you tried to unzip it, where we put all the files. And then the title is here. We're going to be removing this. I'm going to be calling this duplicate wedding blog. And then next here is a step that you may or may not want to do. Within the new admin account, what it does is it's creating a new user to log into the WordPress. Now, it will still have the older user still there, so you will need to make sure to go in and remove them later if you don't want them to be there anymore. If you're setting up a new administrator who's going to be managing it, easy enough to do here. If you're managing it still yourself with both accounts and you're planning to be the only one, there's no need to do this step. You can actually just leave it there and it'll use the older administrator settings. In this case, we're going to actually going to create a new user. We're we're just going to call it dot easy, and we're going to use the same password you used before, just for simplicity's sake. You can go through the advanced settings here if you're wanting to make sure not to transfer everything. So if there's a table in, for instance, the database you don't want to transfer across, like for instance, just as an example, you could not transfer the tra the actual users, and it would drop all the older users. Just an example. If you wanted to remove any plugins and manually set them up, you can remove them from the list. In this case, we're not going to actually modify any of them. We're just going to leave it the way it is. I'm going to click on where it says Run Update. And we can see it installed everything. There's no errors. There's no warnings, no anything. So everything is now set up. The second thing it now tells you it needs to do is to update the permalinks. So we can actually just tell this to open it in a new tab. I'm going to open it up. So we need to put in the one we created here and then the password. It's going to sign us in here. And you can see it automatically takes you into the permalink section by itself. So the permalinks, it's defaulting is to postname just, just because we had postname set up before. It's generally the most common one to use, and a lot of people like it, so we're going to leave it there. Even if you don't change it, you need to make sure to go in and do this step. It is very critical. We need to click on where it saves changes. Now, this is because WordPress actually creates its own URL, so it changes what's in the address bar. If you don't do this step, you'll actually click on links, and you'll see a whole bunch of broken links all over the site. It's not because it didn't install everything properly. It's not because it's not all there. It's just because WordPress doesn't know where the files are now stored. So doing this permalink rebuilds that all. It tells you everything's fine. It also does this now where it says at the top that the duplicator installed everything. It's done the permalinks. It's followed the step. It's asking you to remove the files. So we're going to click on Remove Files next, and it's going to remove the installer files. And the important thing of this is it means nobody can try and run the installer, basically overwrite your site and create the new user and password for it. So very important to get rid of that older site. You don't want it there. And this way now you know it's protected and all set up. So now if we go and actually visit the site, we're going to see it set up exactly this is the same as the other one we showed you briefly earlier. It even has the plugins and everything set up going through the rotation here of the photo gallery on the site. And we can see it's got everything all set up. There are no difference between the two sites. And so as you can see here, very easy, very simple to clone the site, very easy to create and get it up and running with this plugin. If you do run into any problems with it, you can definitely contact our support. We'll be more than happy to walk you through it. You can also make sure to follow us on Twitter. You can also like us on Facebook and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're going to be coming to you with more videos. This one was actually generated because of a comment we had. So if you have any other videos you'd like to see, just make sure to leave us any other comments as well. And we'll try and get around to them as soon as we can. And we'll try and bring you more videos as well all the time. So make sure to let us know if there's anything you want to see. Thank you for watching as always.